Hello everyone, Kevin here with an all new modding Minecraft with Forge tutorial. Uh, Forge has been updated for Minecraft 1.88 and I'm not sure if I'll be using it right away. Uh, it's still in beta and might be a little buggy. However, for those of you who want to give it a go, here's a quick setup tutorial. Because when I tried to set it up, I ran into a small problem. And in case anyone else has had this issue, I wanted to show you how to fix it. Uh, we're going to need to download four files, uh, the latest Java JDK, the Forge API installer, uh, the Forge source, and Eclipse. The links are all in the description. On the Forge download site, select the Forge for Minecraft 1.88 and download the installer for Windows and the MDK, which is the Forge source, and save them to your desktop. Next is the latest Java JDK, uh, which at the time of this recording is version 8U66. Make sure to get the 64-bit version. I haven't tested Forge 1.88 on a 32-bit system because I haven't used a 32-bit operating system in a very long time. Um, and to be honest, if you're doing any sort of Minecraft modding or coding of any kind at this point, you really should be on a 64-bit operating system. Uh, so I can't guarantee that Forge will even decompile on a 32-bit system anymore. And finally, we download Eclipse for Java developers. Again, be sure to get the 64-bit version. So now we start by installing the Java JDK. I already have this installed, so I won't do it again. Next is the Forge API. Uh, you have the option to install the server API as well, um, but I won't be coding for the server, so I'll just be installing the client API. Select client and click OK. Then we can open the Eclipse zip file and extract the Eclipse folder to the desktop. And finally, we extract the Forge source to a folder on the desktop. And I'll just rename this to something a little cleaner. This log file was created by the Forge API installer, and you can just delete that. And now we can move on to decompiling and setting up the Forge coding environment. Open the Forge source folder. And if you right click in the window, you get a normal pull down context menu. However, if you hold down the shift key and right click in the window, you get this added option in the context menu. Open command window here. Click on that to open a command window. Okay, now for those of you who are following along step by step while watching this video, stop. There's something I'd like to show you before we continue. And if you keep following along, you may have to repeat this step. In this window, you would normally enter the command gradlu setup decomp workspace. So let's try that and see what happens. And we have a fail. 
After about 10 minutes, the decompile process fails with a Java heap space error, which is really just an out of memory error. So how do we fix this? Well, let me just tell you, this error might not happen to you if you have a huge amount of memory. This is my home coding system and it only has four gigs of RAM. And from what I've read, Forge 1.88 requires at least two gigs of dedicated memory to decompile Minecraft. So the solution I found for this is to force Java to assign two gigs of memory to Gradle using a command line argument. So we start with the gradlu setup decomp workspace command. And we add the switch argument to the end. This command tells Java to assign two gigs of memory to this Gradle operation. So let's run that and see what happens. And we have success. The only thing left to do is to run gradlu again with the eclipse command to set up the eclipse project files. And when that's done, we can run Eclipse. When Eclipse asks for the workspace, click Browse, Navigate to, and select the Eclipse folder in the Forge source folder. And that's it. There's obviously an example mod here, but I demonstrated in my first Forge video how to delete that and start a new mod project. Let's hit the run button and see if the game loads and runs properly in debug mode. This is the new Forge loading window. Now the warning at the top here says that this version of Forge is still in beta and problems may arise. Doesn't mean there will be problems, but there could be. So we'll have to keep that in mind when we proceed. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps. If you like this video, please hit the like button and feel free to share and subscribe. See you next time.